U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has held talks in South Korea amid concerns over North Korea's growing military ties with Russia. Blinken met with his South Korean counterpart Park Jin. Blinken condemned Pyongyang for helping Russia in its invasion of Ukraine by allegedly sending munitions. He also warned Russia against supporting North Korea's nuclear weapons and missile programs. And of course we have uh, real concerns about any support for, its, uh, for North Korea's uh, ballistic missile pro programs, for its nuclear technology, uh, for its uh, space launch capacity. Uh, and as uh, we said earlier, uh, that support would be in clear violation of multiple Security Council resolutions. Russia has an obligation, especially as a permanent member of the Security Council, uh, to uphold the resolutions, not to violate them. Yoon Shin is a journalist working for South Korea's Arirang TV. She told us more about Blinken's talks in Seoul and North Korea's possible response to them. I think that was the key agenda. The top agenda was what exactly to do with North Korea and Russia's alleged arms deal and military cooperation. Blinken, during the joint press conference, asked even for China to step in and stop North Korea from violating this UN Security Council resolution. And Blinken has made it clear throughout his whole visit to Seoul that it would be prioritizing and strengthening ties with its key strategic ally here in the Indo-Pacific region, being Seoul. We're still yet to see how Blinken's visit to Seoul and what's discussed will affect uh, inter-Korea relations. But what we know for sure is that inter-Korean tensions are flaring high, and whenever South Korea bolsters its cooperation with key allies, the North retaliates every time Washington and Seoul strengthens or expands their joint military drills or increases the amount of U.S. military assets in Korea. The North resumes their long-range missile tests. And this year, North Korea has been very vocal about how it would continue developing its nuclear weapons and missiles. It stated many times that it had no choice but to defend itself from belligerent security threats like the U.S. and South Korea. So we may see another tit-for-tat. And South Korea is also concerned with what Pyongyang might do on November 18th, which it declared as a missile industry day. And this was to mark its launch of the Hwasong-17 ICBM last year. And so South Korea's military is keeping a close eye on how the Blinken trip will affect inter-Korean relations and whether the North will test launch anything that day, namely a uh, possible spy satellite, which the North has failed two times before. If they do this time around, it will be their third attempt. So security threats are posing a big concern. U.S. and South Korea both say Russia uh, has secured munitions from the North for use in Ukraine and that a lot of it has already been delivered. On this part of the front line, there's no time to lose. Soldier Vitali says the Russians are firing much more artillery than before. Tell us when it started. Probably about a month ago. That's when you started feeding it everywhere. I arrived back from leave and we noticed it. That would have been a few weeks after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un arrived in Russia for high-level talks with Vladimir Putin. The last time they met was four years ago. What was discussed? Strictly confidential. But an arms deal between the two allies was tipped among Western voices to be a hot topic. Russia has been forced to desperately search around the world for military equipment. As we've been warning publicly, one of those states is North Korea. And we now have information that North Korea has delivered arms to Russia for use in Ukraine. More specifically, 1,000 containers of military equipment and munitions delivered by ship along this route. Russia's comment on the US claims, hearsay. You know, I don't comment on rumors. The fact that Americans constantly blame everyone for everything is not news. It didn't allay Western concerns that Sergei Lavrov made these comments in Pyongyang. Just over a month after Kim met Vladimir Putin, the Russian foreign minister traveled to North Korea. And in front of the cameras, it was smiles all around between him and Moscow's old ally. South Korea, too, says its intelligence suggests that North Korea has sent more than a million artillery rounds to Russia. Enough, according to Seoul's spy agency, for two months of fighting in Ukraine. 
North Korea is operating its munitions factories at full capacity to meet Russian demands. North Korea has also mobilized residents and civilian factories to boost production. Made in North Korea or not, by the time the enemy's artillery has arrived on the battlefield, that question is irrelevant to Ukrainian soldiers. The more pressing consideration, as with their own munitions, is their trajectory and how much more they'll be. Let's explore this with Major Patrick Hinton, who's an officer in the British Army's Royal Artillery and a recent visiting fellow at the Royal United Services Institute. That's a London-based defence think tank. Uh, welcome to DW, Major. Uh, the suspicion is that something like a million artillery rounds have made their way from North Korea to Russia. How much of a difference is that likely to make? So it's hard to be categorical. Artillery is key to the Russian war effort and the theory of victory, uh, as we've seen so far in the conflict. So a larger stockpile of shells certainly isn't going to harm that endeavour. Um, the stock itself isn't as important as how it's going to be used by commanders. For instance, it could be used to increase a, a weight of fire on a particular access, access and put pressure on the Ukrainians. Uh, but we've seen throughout that the defender holds the advantage, so that might not be the best use. Um, it may just be used to extend the low intensity uh, fighting that's seen in most places along the front at the moment. So just sort of extending what we're seeing so far. Um, but there's lots of dependencies. So you need howitzers to fire them. Lots of those have been destroyed. You need well-maintained bits of those howitzers, such as the barrels, which is a real maintenance concern. Uh, and you need trained crews. And the Russians have had lots and lots of casualties. So lots of things are stitched together. It's right. not just the pile of shells you've got behind you. And, and it's interesting that for all the talk of uh, modern high-tech weaponry and the use of drones, that artillery is still seen as being so important. Absolutely. It enables other battlefield effects, such as giving infantry and armour freedom of manoeuvre. It can suppress enemy activity by fixing them in place and preventing them from attacking your forces. Uh, and it can cause damage over a wide area and doesn't rely on exact precision. Um, and right. it causes significant casualties. Estimates vary so far in the conflict, but they sit high around 70%. That said, the precision and the technology, the use of uncrewed aerial vehicles, drones to spot, uh, is really important. And there has been a shift uh, for the Russians in using more precise munitions, such as their Krasnopol laser-guided precision shell, which generally means they have to use fewer of them. And there's been a real effort to produce more of those within Russia. Last year, the EU pledged to supply Ukraine with a million rounds of ammunition within a year. But the bloc is struggling to provide that. So could you talk us through why that might be and how North Korea seems to have been able to come up with so many so quickly? So for the, for the North Koreans, they themselves have been preparing for a conflict with their southern neighbour um, since they've existed. Uh, and artillery is absolutely crucial to that. So their sort of stock will have been produced for that principally. And also they've got their sort of state-owned economy, which will enable them to direct all their resources at creating those projectiles. And so what is North Korea likely to be getting from Russia in return? So it, the reporting seems to suggest it might be some sort of technology transfer, sort of rather than cash, sort of support with research and development. And the most commonly cited uh, example has been potentially supporting them launch a satellite. Uh, North Korea, of course, already heavily sanctioned. If these allegations do turn out to be true, does the world just uh, look on and, and watch? Can, can, can anything else be done about it? I think it'll be a, a case of reinforcing sanction, sanction regimes, but that's not really my area of expertise. OK. Good talking to you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Patrick Hinton from the Royal United Thank Services you. Institute. Thank you.